We'll start with the next speaker, Mr. Ashok Khanna, who is a client partner, UK and European Union, and major accounts and global health, um, pre-sales and solutions, business development, data consulting services. A business leader with experience in PLN management, management consulting, business development, developing strategic outsourcing roadmap, taking products from concept to commercialization and process excellence. As a business development leader, he has a, fo he has a global focus in medical device and pharmaceutical domain and in the functional areas including manufacturing, operations management, asset management, R&D, quality, regulatory and product sustenance. Mr. Khanna is considered a thought leader in digital forces including mobility, cloud analytics and internet of things. He also holds a patent on medical fluid access device with antiseptic indicator and has won the Medical Design Excellence Award for Software Controlled Electromechanical Device. Today he is here to talk about innovations, specifically the Internet of Things, trends, and how these may influence and impact the life sciences industry. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ashokan. Okay, I think uh, we heard a lot of uh, sensitivity around the numbers going in billions of dollars. And uh, if I remember some of the numbers we heard was like 10 to 12 billion dollars annual expense on the healthcare in India itself. I'll take a perspective a little bit broader. I'll go into the global aspects and then I'll dive into one of the therapeutic areas where we are many. That is the one I touch. But again, the cost aspect is the one. And uh, today my focus will be on the innovation, focusing on the life sciences. Uh, one of the quotes which I remember from Mr. Ratan Tata, he said, it's easy to get to the top by cost cutting or by acquiring company, but to stay at the top, innovation is the mantra. Very true in any segment, not just healthcare, but today I'll focus on the innovation on the healthcare side. I'll touch upon some of the use cases and the trends in the discussion. I'll pick some of the items or the key focus areas which uh, I have taken in my talk from uh, Mr. Shabbani again, namely cost cutting or the cost reduction. <coughs> healthcare expense, we talked about $12 billion can easily shoot very high, roughly 10 to 15 percent of a GDP, which could be even in trillions of dollars, specifically if I take the example of the United States of America. The numbers are much, much bigger. Secondly, talking about the preventable human errors. Again, a couple of slides I saw touched upon those. So surprisingly, I think I developed my presentation totally independent of Mr. Bali. And if you're looking for thought leadership, I'm quite surprised. Talked about 2006, preventable error staff and one of the other infection related aspects. In 2007, I had the privilege to lead a team to develop the world's first antimicrobial coated device with the thought to reduce the hospital acquired infection. So not surprised, even after eight, 10 years, still the number one issue in the hospital might be hospital acquired infection. And the number of deaths, which I think again a data data, 78,000 deaths in one year, was caused by the hospital. human errors, which could be prevented. Talking about the cost and talking about managing the cost is one aspect and what can be done to minimize. We heard a couple of comments on how we talk about more from getting treated versus going towards left, what I say left shift, in uh, preventing or going into the wellness. So some of the things I'll talk about that, again today's agenda will focus purely on the innovation and one of the areas as uh, was mentioned with the Internet of Things and how we are leveraging that to manage overall cost, not only in the Indian environment, but in that global perspective. From the Internet of Things perspective, again, to keep the definition crisp and short, we'll focus totally on the sensors and the devices. Some of the devices we talked about can be on the patient. I see the world going away from the devices and going towards the sensors, be it measuring your heart rate, measuring your blood pressure, measuring the blood glucose, and so on. And the smart devices like cell phones and other PDAs can be very well leveraged as a gateway or a device which can relay those vital signals to your healthcare provider. Some of the benefits which we expect is again connectivity, we talked about mobility and how the mobile devices are used. And uh, I would say like the cross-domain leverage which we get, not only on the healthcare, but how the healthcare and the transport can be together, synergically use the technologies and uh, reduce the cost of the healthcare. Reducing the waste, again, is the other way of uh, managing the healthcare cost. And definitely not the least, talking about the innovation in the business models. Are there ways that we can leverage the new business models? For example, talking about uh, analytics aspect. I'm sorry, is it going on its own or? I'm not saying the, 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 the PDF. Yeah, 
No, I'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. So talking about running the analytics, again, we talked about gathering the data and uh, Mr. Bali touched upon big data. It's easy to get the data is one aspect with the big data. The next opportunity which we see is how often do you run the analytics? How often do you check is my blood pressure, blood rate, glucose meter are in line with my health, with my age? How do they respectfully reflect compared to my history and my historical trends? And under certain conditions, I would say there are chronic conditions where you can say, how do my data reflects and compares with other patients in, let's say, similar geography, similar demography, even similar race, or maybe even other countries? So those are some of the opportunities that we believe can help manage the healthcare costs. Getting at the global level, taking a $70 trillion, again, the numbers will be big if I got the global level, $70 trillion technology uh, GDP of which, again, we are splitting between the developing and the developed nations. And focusing on the healthcare itself, 10% of that, which is roughly $7 trillion, can be influenced by the Internet of Things in the coming years. And again, I'm using the word Internet of Things in a more loosely fashion. You can include the industrial Internet of Things. Internet of everything is commonly used in jargon to, again, cover everything or every aspect of the technology. A couple of words which I added was Internet of Things to medical devices and Internet of Things to the pharmaceutical manufacturer. And I came across Internet of Things for consumers over there. So bundling all those things together here, roughly 50%, I think 46% of the GDP will be influenced by the technology with the goal to bring more efficiencies. And healthcare is no different. Talking about just the sensors and what it means for the healthcare sector, we, we are projecting roughly 50 billion sensors will be there by 2020. So not too far away from here, we talk about five, six years. And again, a lot of factors will influence that, be it a standardization, talking about devices, talking to each other, again, at the global level. So last October, I was at MIT attending one of the conferences on IoT itself. And quite surprisingly for me, there were a group of subject matter experts from US as well as Europe talking about how to develop the standards so that the devices can talk across the job. And the government of India came with the startups which are coming in India can have a global impact. Standards which are there, at least I don't expect uh, all these two common countries to have a single standard, but definitely the opportunity is there to have the standard which are interoperable. So a device developed in India can at least talk to the technology and uh, communicate with the rest of the devices in the world. I'll take a couple of minutes to talk about the industries in general. Again, one of the slides which we really like and I thought I'd share. Like products, even the industry go through a life cycle. They start, again, if they're successful, they get to a, I would say, ramp up card or a shape card. Takes a couple of years or a few years to get to a level where they can have critical mass. And then they again go to a, what I call it, a dominant design, or they become a part of the overall a global perspective or global economy. So some of the technologies going from textile and so on, coming up to the internet of the year, were more driven by the, I would say like here's the economy which are more of the industrial revolution. Now going to the digital economy, going, going towards the right side. Internet of Things is one of the ones which I picked there. And uh, if you see a pattern, it takes roughly 30 years for a technology to come from the starting or beginning or inception to get to a point that it reaches its peak. So for the Internet of Things, the world was coined roughly in 1999, 2000. So by 2030, we expect it will be at its peak and will be part of the mainstream. And I talked about the previous slide about $70 trillion economy. So that is the time period we expect we can see trillions of dollars will be around this technology. And these technologies will be influencing all aspects of our life, not just the healthcare. So one of the slides which I like, again, when we talk about why the errors happen. Again, these are human beings with well intent, very good intentions to get us healthy. But if you look at their day-to-day -day life, look at the number of devices which are there. And sometimes I get, get confused where the patient is. I thought I'd put a bet on that. If you can find a patient, I'll let work sometime. And again, it's not just the devices. There are multiple parameters we are looking at. There are alerts and alarms. If the patient is sick, you'll be surprised how many alarms and alerts are going on in one operating theater. And to figure it out, like how to manage that is no joke. So definitely errors are happening, but it's not a trivial task. You can say, okay, yes, I know, I can eliminate it. So using the technology to reduce it, to help the doctors and uh, surgeons to even 
manage some of these devices by technology can make a big difference. We talked about big data, again, talking about the collective knowledge. In the yesteryears, it was easy that one doctor is treating you, they can have your history and even your maybe family history. If the doctor is there for long and the way I think we live in India, chances are we go to the neighborhood doctor or the doctor used to come to our house at least 20 years ago. And now we are in the second generation from the same family. And chances are the doctors also might be doing the same fashion. So they have all the history, they can talk about it, they can look at the vitals and they can say, okay, what is the recommended treatment for you? But given the opportunity that you can now collect the data, there is a digital technology available that you can gather the data of a pop bigger population. It's not just one family, not just one community, not a big chain like Fortress, I'm talking about at a national level, where you may have a national healthcare plan, where the data is easily accessible. And a lot of insurance companies these days, if I take the large scale companies like uh, United Health Group, they operate uh, billions of dollars in the insurance coverage and the kind of data they may have is quite phenomenal. So what can be done with that data? Analytics is the next level which I think will take most of the industries, including healthcare, to the next level. So thinking about using the digital technology and leveraging that, not only in managing the healthcare, but thinking from the perspective that uh, you are reducing the cost as well while doing so. So earlier we used to say it's difficult to find a needle in the haystack, but definitely with the analytics and big data, you definitely can find that needle also. So I'll move into the next section of my talk now talking about some of the use cases, how these technologies and the trends can be leveraged. One of the examples again in the previous talk we had was devices or the wristbands. Those are the ones which you're talking on the left side are the sensors. Again, could be very well the full fledged devices which are connected to the patients. Going from as trivial as your pulse rate monitor, BP machine, you may have a weighing scale which is as a Wi-Fi these days which can connect with again your profile to tell what your weight is over a period of time. Monitors and other sensors which are coming. Using these on the patients can help to connect and get the vitals in real time. You no longer have to go to a doctor when you think or you feel that you're not comfortable. Getting the real-time data helps to get the diagnosis or get at least the real-time data. From the perspective, you can monitor the health more frequently and you can go towards more of a preventive care. The moment you feel that pulse rate is high, you may not feel something, but internally the data can be collected and based on that information, you can pass that information to a gateway, which is a personal health indicator or aggregator. Very well can be a mobile device. The easiest one, smart devices are popular. If not, you can put a gateway in the house, which can be a senior router, which can relay that data to the electronic health record server or even to the doctor. <coughs> the thought or the perspective is again, we don't wait till you really feel that you're really sick, because that I think is already like kind of too late. We want you to monitor frequently, check your health very frequently, and when the data is saying that, okay, chances are that you're outside your permissible limit or the range for any of these parameters, Look at the indicator. We are trying to, we have aggregated all these parameters to use an artificial intelligence algorithm to make it easy for again the caregiver now. You don't have to go to a doctor for everything. That indicator will give you a traffic light sign signal to tell your health in terms of green, yellow, and red. Very simple. Green, you are healthy, don't worry. Yellow, let's monitor some of these parameters more carefully. And if it gets red, that's the time to go to the doctor to make sure that you can get a proper treatment. So again, one of the aspects on reducing the healthcare cost because we're trying to shift from treatment to going towards the wellness. Getting to the health, again, big data. The data can be collected for one patient, for a bigger community. You can compare your graph profile with your own historical data to give the perspective of how you're doing over a period of time or as you age. Couple of other implementation of these, again, I think, I'll pick a couple of other examples from uh, Dr. Bali's, uh, Mr. Bali's uh, presentation. We talked about aging population. In the developed countries, people prefer to stay independently, and uh, aging population, again, has one of the most critical needs for healthcare. Putting these kind of devices and sensors can assure that they are being monitored. Again, for the privacy reason, they want to live independently, want to live away from, uh, I would say, like a joint family or a broader family. But again, putting these kind of devices can help a lot to figure it out they are healthy. I can monitor my grandparents, my parents, easily check whether they are healthy, whether they are taking their medications, are some of the aspects which uh, this technology can help. I'll take one of the example in there on the glucose monitor, we talked about that. Again, being one of the therapeutic area, 
not only India, I would say like there is one of the epidemic diabetes which is uh, really expanding and growing like any crazy disease. 387 million people globally suffer from this condition. To make the matter worse, one in two or roughly 50 percent are not aware that they are diabetic. Now talk about treatment versus wellness. And recently there was some survey I picked, I think, uh, as we said, as maybe this week as so. 90% of the diabetes patients, this was the small survey in uh, some of the cities in India, 90% of the diabetic patients had the false impression that their blood glucose level is under control. So we are talking about millions and millions of people who are diabetes, and we are talking about certain segments in which 50% of people who know they are diabetic, but 90% of them have a false impression that they are healthy. And this is a disease which is can lead to some several really critical complications going from blindness, heart attacks, kidney failure, and amputations. $612 billion are spent only 2014 on diabetes and the complications caused by diabetes. Again, $612 billion B, not a small number. So huge opportunity for us to innovate and contribute, not only to save money, to optimize these expenses, but to make a world a better place for us. I'll shift a little bit into the next example or the use case. On the diabetes side, there are type 1 diabetes where the body is not producing insulin and the patients have to take a regular dose of insulin or have a insulin pump which gives them a regular dose of insulin based on the day, based on the time and they take meal and so on, or exercise and whatever their lifestyle is. So on the left side, we are talking about a closed loop system in which uh, a glucose meter or a sensor is checking the blood glucose level of the subject passes that information to a control algorithm and uh, based on that intelligence we feed that information to an insulin pump which basically programs how much insulin should be given to the patient and then the body reacts to that particular insulin dose and with the few iteration the blood glucose level of that patient comes into an acceptable range so that's a blood glucose meter which already is there in the market today I believe a couple of companies like Medtronic already have uh, some of the devices and the systems which do this part but what we are trying to do is take that data, gather that data over a bigger population again, using a local gateway which could be very well your cell phone or another smart device, relay that information on a cloud where we can gather the data, not only for you, but uh, millions and millions of diabetic patients, gather that on a cloud in a big data kind of setup, run analytics on that to understand for this particular patient or this profile of patients, what treatments work in past. So we are no longer talking about a patient, let's try this dose and see if it is acceptable, let's again recheck whether the blood glucose level is in the acceptable range or not. We are trying to go a little bit away from that and again, trying to use the data which has worked in previous life. Not only one for one patient, but for a similar profile, be based on their, I would say even for the genomics, there are certain uh, genetics, I would say like uh, markers now, which are visible for some diabetes patients or a segment of diabetes patients. So as that information becomes more relevant, you can use the genetic information, you can use the information about their race, information about their other medical profile, be their weight categories, pulse rate, and so on. And you can say, okay, this is more intelligent way of saying, okay, try this particular profile of the insulin, which can be again related back to the insulin pump. May not be real time in microsecond, but near real time, which could be in few seconds. Still, I would say like across the globe, that might be an acceptable way of uh, using the treatment, which uses the collective knowledge of the bigger population. And this is one of the idea of going towards like evidence-based medicine, again another term which was used in the previous presentation. A lot of insurance companies are going towards the impression that we patient goes to the hospital for one condition. We talked about the big infection, staphylococcus or some other bug, and uh, unfortunately it could lead to several critical medical conditions and I would say it's one of the leading uh, causes of death also in the uh, at least the data which I use for the US hospital. And I think I won't be surprised if it's globally applicable. So a lot of insurance companies are talking about why should I pay the hospitals for other conditions which they picked in the hospital itself. This patient is going for medical condition A, we'll pay only for that. Other things they picked in the hospital, hospital why don't you reimburse for that? A very challenging situation which will become like outside like more critical down the road. So having evidence-based medicine is again another aspect where a lot of reimbursement is going for pay for performance. So that is one of the steps which we are taking, 
going away from uh, I would say like the conventional way of treatment or trying to say how we can use the technology to reduce not only the cost, improve the patient care and hopefully make the world a better place. Again, this is the aspect of, uh, I would say, the patients and the treatment. Now, taking a step back, what happens in the manufacturing environment? I'm not sure what percentage of the audience here is on the manufacturing side, but I'll quickly take a couple of seconds and uh, skip this item. A lot of wastage happens in the manufacturing itself. So trying to optimize and leveraging the technology to improve the utilization of the assets is other way of our way means to say, okay, how we can reduce the cost of manufacturing itself. And that will contribute to further reducing the cost of healthcare. Uh, last use case I'll touch upon again on the distribution of the supply chain now. Surprisingly, uh, so for me it's shockingly, 1% of the drugs in the developed nation is counterfeit. Which means you are taking a pill, but you don't know if it is really authentic coming from OEM or not, or is it just a sugar pill or something else. And that number shoots to 30% in the developing economies. Roughly $75 billion of the drugs in the global market is uh, counterfeit. Again, one of the aspects or one of the reasons which we are developing the technologies and the solution in that fashion is can we have track and trace mechanism that we can track the drugs from going from the manufacturers into the supply chain to the pharmacy, that at the pharmacy I can check whether this drug is authentic or not. And that can give me the full round where this drug came from. Again, 30% of the counterfeit drugs, patients are taking the medicine assuming they are getting healthy, but they are not getting treated. And all those things add up onto the one, their condition getting severe, and definitely adding to the overhead of the healthcare system. So again, touching upon on the, some basic elements, talk about the, lowering the cost, making the life better, getting the real-time data to improve the health of the patient, going away from the treatment to think more about the wellness, and so on. Couple, some of the things which you have worked in this area, you are most welcome to take time to go through this information. I have details behind the case studies I talked about. We can leverage that and hopefully distribute and use among your communities and network and uh, have to spread the awareness of this. Thank you very much and uh, we have to take a question. Uh, Ms. Mena uh, sent to the honors piece. She has been with HOSMAC for a long time as a director and is now an advisor and the two-go person whenever we have any issues with healthcare is She has been a source of inspiration for all of us.